for coming to thoughts about organizational administrative excellence for terrific companies or Teo of Etsy. Uh, Teo of etc. The what? We had a meeting about this. No, 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 no. no, no it's no, definitely we, Teo of Etsy. No, 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 no. We talked about this. Yeah, you talked about it and I didn't understand it. If you could just speak, you know, clearly, then we'd get past this. I'm All Chad right, Haas. This is where, go this is where this is going. It's, it's going to be a fun talk. It's all right, it's going to be a long talk, that's all I know. I'm Chad Haas, welcome to the talk. And I'm Romain Guy, welcome to the talk as well. I'd like to talk about ourselves a little bit. Actually, we're going to talk about ourselves the entire time, but we're going to start with some very directed information. Uh, we both have a long consulting history, of course, as you can tell uh, by the dress code. I'm very pleased to see that my colleague has finally cottoned to the dress code and now wears a tie as well. Yeah, I got my promotion, I'm a true consultant now. Is very official. Uh, we've had many talks um, and many consulting opportunities in testing and programming languages uh, with the FART language, uh, functional. Functional and reactive Turing complete language. And uh, many talks about process uh, and process as well as process. Um, we are now managing management consultants uh, and we consult on that, of course. Um, and right now, today in particular, we are telling people how to run their companies. And you may be asking yourselves, uh, what am I doing in this room? And the second question you may be asking is, what do they know about running companies? And what I have to say is we have a long history in running companies. We are the perfect people to be, to be talking about this today. In particular, I'm Romain Guy. I have 20 years of experience in running. Uh, and I'm Chet Haas. I have over 30 years experience in companies. So we're going to talk about companies, we're going to talk about business. It's really the same thing today. And there are many aspects of companies and business. Uh, we're going to cover all of these today. We're going to talk about marketingness. We're going to talk about productness. We're going to talk about mindfulnessness, engineeringness, and managementness. And you put all of these together and you get business. So we want to start with the most important one, marketingness. Obviously, marketingness is about delighting the client. It's also about inspiring your team. So we've come up with a bunch of motivational posters. We also, we put them on the walls. We put them in the cubicles of our employees to make sure they understand what the company is about. We also put them on picture frames to replace the, the photos of their families. We also put them in the, in the bathrooms. Other companies offer these things called testing on the toilet with leaflets there. We have marketing in the... We couldn't actually think of the M word, but it's, it's marketing on, in the bathroom. It's printed on the toilet paper. Silent M. We also put it, put it on shirts, napkins, handkerchief, any surface we can find. But it's also about frightening the competition. Sometimes we just mail those to our worst and um, our competitors uh, to make sure they know what we're about. So here's the first one. Innovational paradigm. I think it says it all right there. Let's take a look at another one. <laughs> How about transformational excellence? And I would like to point out that we commissioned a photographer to take all the photos. We wanted each photo to be tailored to every message so that they make sense. We sent an entire team of photographers throughout the world, each one with a single slogan, to take the perfect picture that matched the slogan. Uh, this is in a former company that unfortunately ran out of funding uh, and went out of business shortly and thereafter. I think one of the photographers is still missing. <laughs> but sent in an excellent picture, and that's all that matters. Uh, next, of course, obviously, technological serendipity. Then we have targeted inspirationalism. You click too fast. I, you know what? You, you should you, click. You're, bad, you're better at this. Let me One of us is qualified, both right. of us are not. Well, I have a tie now, so I am. All right, you ready? Go. Reactive conservation, conserva conservationism. Predilection for excellence. Chaotic placidity. <laughs> Can't you feel it? I can. Torturous calm. <laughs> Flabbergasted affordance. This is something that we often deal with with our design department. Festering brilliance. Craven hopefulness. It really, it has that sense of, of calm and of future and of... And a hint of terror. And embarrassment. That too. Liquidated divination. 
Uh, that's often how we come up with those talks, actually. <laughs> Centrifugal quality, or is it centripetal quality? I can't, we debated this one for a while. I can't remember what the real one was, but moving on. It seems to work. This is one of my favorites. Infinite potentialities. Think about this one. It will come back later. <laughs> the sky is the limitless. We don't like negative words like limit, limitless. With any word, why not make it longer? That's the slogan that we have in the company. Why not make it longer? Irrational protuberance. I think that's what my doctor said last time I saw him. You should get that looked at. I tried. Exceptional fortitudinalism. Think about it. Think about how to spell that second word. It took me a while. Yeah, and if you think about it hard enough, please tell us because we don't know. Opulent futurity. I don't even know how to say the first one. I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. It reads very well. It pronounces very poorly. Sounds rich. I like to reach. I like to reach for altitudinal overreach. If you can reach, why not reach just a little bit further? Are you really, are you really trying hard enough? For this one, we asked uh, for help for, from Nicola, all the way in the back here. He's on that picture. Dubious individualism. It's not about you, Nicola, I think. Electronic marginalism. This is really a, a NBU problem that we need to conquer. Um, society is being marginalized in the rest of the world, yet available technology exists, so why not reach out to them with electronic marginalism and phrases like it? Premeditative solutionism. That's something used by RPMs. We're not sure what it means either. Prospective achievementationing. Why not? Why not? Fortuitous elegance, another thing from our designers. But let's talk about something else, productness. Let's talk about products. Let's talk about what we need to achieve products. I think everybody can agree uh, that the most important thing when dealing with a product is how you actually manufacture and get the product out to the real world, which you couldn't deal with um, without the organization of, obviously, PMs. There are several type of PMs in any company, and we wanted to cover this uh, in particular. There are, of course, the product managers, the people that actually manage the entire process of the features and the production of the product. We refer to them as the PM. And then we have the project manager. Um, so we use project managers who are inspired by pair programming. So we pair every project manager with an engineer, and they stand right behind the engineer. And their job is to say, are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> Are we there yet? Until we are there yet. They're also called PM. Next, we have the program manager who manages the programs. programs. <laughs> um, we refer to them by PM. Next, obviously, process manager. We have a lot of processes. We need, to pe we need someone to come up with a process to define the processes. It is their role. And they're obviously the PMs in the organization. Uh, next, of course, personnel manager, um, sometimes referred to as HR or hiring. We like to call them PM. <laughs> There's another type. Um, well, we forgot what they do. Could uh, not remember this. We know they are PMs. Yep. We're just not sure yep. what they're, they're in there somewhere. Managing. They're really important, though. Mindfulness. Mindfulnessness. This one is hard to say. So, you know, this is a crazy world we live in. We're all ambitious. We have stressful lives. We work hard. So we all need a break. And we in need fact, time for ourselves to reflect on our own health and, you know, our mind. We need a break just from this talk. So we use different techniques at our company that you should adopt. I want everyone to work with me here. Um, so we see the word on the screen. Could you just breathe with me with the slide just in? Out. <laughs> Feel better? I know they didn't why. even try. So 
When we think about mindfulness, we think about it in our own lives, in this talk, certainly, uh, but also in the ways that we conduct business. Why can't meetings, which are so prevalent in our corporate lives, have more mindfulness in them? Why can't we stop in the middle of the meeting and just say to someone who's trying to get a point across, do you mind? <laughs> we also like to use meditationness. So it's important to take time to meditate, reflect on what's important to you, like your next promotion or making more money. We do this a lot. We think uh, the Chinese art of designing a space that is appropriate for the function is very important. Feng Shui-ness, of course. Uh, we think about this in three different aspects in the companies that we run. Uh, one is the scent. We, we like to design a scent that is particular to the atmosphere, well, in particular to what we're trying to accomplish, and also masks the hygiene of the engineers. Yeah, that's mostly the reason. Um, we also like to design the wall colors and do something that is appropriate and we feel makes the developers and all the engineers much more productive. <laughs> and finally, we like to design an environment that's not just closed off offices separating everybody from themselves. Why can't we have open spaces with collaborative and open communication? So of course, we prefer the cube environment that enforces that. But a company to us is like a family. We want everyone to feel at home. We sure decide you know, what scent you're gonna smell all day, what colors you're gonna see, and what your cubicle looks like. But we'd like you to feel like you have your personal space, that you know, you're part of this big family. So when you, when, you're get, when you get a desk on your first day, we also allocate you a personal space that you can customize with anything you want. All yours. All yours, right there in that red box. And just for fairness, even remote people will have to abide by this personal space. That's enough for the mindfulness now. Mindfulnessness. Do you mind? Namaste. Engineeringness. So this is about you. One of the problems with engineers that they love to argue all the time, either that or they build frameworks. And we don't want them to do either of those things. <laughs> so everything that we want to do is to keep them busy as much as possible. One way to do this is to remember that engineers are fungible. So if you're launching a new website and you have engineers working on your kernel and they're not busy enough, you can just grab them, put them on the website. It's going to work wonders. You should also keep them fed. It's actually ties to the previous example because sometimes we use the engineers to clean the office or to make the food. The food is free as long as you make it for us. Uh, the other thing about feeding the engineers is if you feed them enough, then they can't get out of the office to go home. So they'll stay around and do Although sometimes they will argue about the food, so it doesn't always work. You can give them important titles. Uh, for instance, tech lead, ninja, guru, senior architect, ideation master, uh, I think that was your idea, brilliant one, and chief quality officer. That role, as far as we can tell, is meaningless and doesn't do anything. But we have it because it made someone happy and busy. And finally, we want to inspire the engineers. There are many ways, we, many ways we can do that. One way is to give speeches. We do this often in the company. We'll bring everybody together for an all hands where they think they're going to learn something important about the product. But instead, we use that opportunity to inspire them through speech. What do you, what you do today will live on until tomorrow and the day after that. And even the day after that, in fact, it will live until our next update, at which point it will not. And when it does not, what will you do? What will you do? You will strive onwards, making it work again and again, satisfying users, impressing colleagues, and increasing your code line count until one day you will cease to exist. But on your gravestone will be the satisfying words, here lies someone who wrote as much code as they could all the way to the end. <laughs> because even when you no longer live on, your code will. Until our next update. <laughs>
uh, that you know, we're talking about business today, we're talking about keeping developers busy, busy, and obviously I think everyone realizes that business is equal to busyness. Keep them busy, they will keep your business running. And whose job it is to keep the engineers busy? It's management. So let's talk about managementness. And in particular, org chartness. Org charts are very important because we believe in transparency. We want everyone to know where they stand, who's the boss, who's not, who has a higher level, who should listen to whom. But the problem with the org chart is that no one ever knows where to find it uh, on, within the company. So we'd like to introduce a new system that we call the real reality org chart. Uh, we call it ROARG chart. And it's a new special organization. So it works like this. This is your office and you need desks for your engineers. So we're gonna install a few desks. And you can notice that we use a slope. Uh, our floors are not flat. <laughs> of course, this is for the different levels. On the left, we have the junior engineers, and all the way to the right, we have the senior engineers. And after every perf cycle, every promotion, we just reshuffle everybody to make sure everyone knows where they stand and how better they are than everybody else. It's a good source of motivation. We also need management. Um, again, we want to recreate the physical, the, we want a physical organization of the org chart. So we're gonna put the manager desks <laughs> on top of the engineers. Again, following the slopes for the different levels of management. Then we have our directors, and obviously our VP at the top. Everyone gets a chair, and when everyone starts at our company, they get a company-branded wedge to make sure that the chair doesn't <laughs> roll all the way down. <laughs> we didn't have them at first, it was a little chaotic. For the managers and directors and VPs, we have, to <laughs> we have taller chairs. And at our company, really, the taller your chair is, the more important you are. And he's the VP. That is a nice chair. I want that chair. Everybody wants that chair. And this gives them the motivation that they need to move up the corporate ladder. But this structure can be a little unstable, uh, so we need the ties that unite us. The interesting things about those wires, they're not, structure, they're not just structural. We can use them to represent the flow of communication, the flow of information throughout the hierarchy. So there's no question about who you should be talking to and who's gonna talk to you. And this is actually how we transmit our memos. Uh, so we use little hooks. <laughs> and you can see the communication flow until the memo is properly filed. and there are more animations for some reason. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the status and the communication of the status in the company. Um, it is very important to communicate what is going on. Everybody's curious about this, in particular your manager and the person who's responsible for your performance. And we believe strongly that there is no such thing as over-communicating. Give more information all the time because that must be what people want. Yeah, it mostly comes down to trust. As a manager, if I don't know what my engineers are doing at all times, how can I trust that they are actually working? We also believe strongly that repetition is fine, and we believe that repetition is fine. <laughs> we have several automated mechanisms to make this easier on the engineering community in the companies. Uh, one is the keystroke mechanism, so we actually have keystroke interceptors on all of the computers so that everything you type is going into a folder uh, in your manager's computer at all times. So they can and do look in that folder all the time to see what you're actually working on. We also have what we call web cameos. Um, so it's actually filming you and then every two minutes it files a little video thing into uh, a folder as well. And we also have mandatory check-ins and we don't mean code check-in of course, that's assumed. What we mean is every half hour you need to actually do a little recording, a status report for your manager and send that off. Tell them what you've been working on for that half hour. And this is of course true for the half day, the day, the week, the month. Uh, and the year as well. This works out really well with the PMs in the org or the project managers, obviously. Um, and what we've seen is really collaborative communication, conversation between these two people where the PM will say, are we there yet? And uh, the engineer will immediately tell them where they are. Are we there yet? Here's where we are. Are we there yet? Here's where we are. And just an entire day can be consumed with conversation. It's, it's really rich and rewarding. One of the most efficient way to keep everyone busy, of course, is meetings. 
So here are some things that we can do for managers, because we saw how we can keep the engineers busy, but how do we keep the, ma the managers busy? The first thing we, we use in our company is auto-booking. We find any empty slot in the manager's calendar, and we book it. <laughs> And then when we saw that, we had this brilliant idea. Uh, we developed a new technology that we call auto-ganting. So we turned the calendar into a Gantt chart, <laughs> thereby, thereby answering all the questions that the various PMs may have about the project and where we are yet. So when they ask a manager, are we there yet, we can just point them at the Gantt chart. Um, they love it. They've been mostly complaining about the lack of colors. Stand-up meetings are very important, very common. We have different software processes that depend on stand-up meetings. We feel that they're so important that we give all the engineers, all the people in the company, standing desks so that they're basically in a scrum all day long. Uh, there are some concepts um, from the, the, the scrum and the stand-up um, and agile methodology that we've extended. Um, so they have this idea of the, the chicken and the pig um, where the chicken is not fully committed because it I, gives I, something that's... I thought it was a, because it's the baby of the chicken. I, I don't know, something don't, about being There's committed. something about chicken and pigs which we don't find very interesting. But what we've come up with is several other animals that we feel more fully represents the actual process in software. One is the squirrel, of course, uh, that will take the product that everyone is working off and run off with it in a random direction. Uh, the magpie, which is the person that's always interested in the new and shiny thing, you also can refer to this as the engineer. Or marketing. Um, dung beetle uh, is, this is really the workhorse of the entire organization. Everybody needs more dung beetles. These are the people that are satisfied working on all the nasty stuff that nobody else wants to do. If only we had more dung beetles in the world. They push it through the process. Cockroaches, um, these are the people you don't even know that they're working on the product. They're hidden somewhere in the organization <laughs> and they're doing stuff for you. They're in the deep, dark corners. You probably want them there, but you probably don't want them too close. Uh, build, build infrastructure people, QAs, fulfillment chain, sales. Yeah. yeah, yeah, unknown. I don't even know what half those people do. Uh, the vulture, of course, just kind of waits around for a project to die and then feeds on its carcass. Um, not terribly productive, but you'll find them in every corporation. And then finally, the slug. And this is a really important um, uh, function because the slug doesn't do anything on a project, nothing whatsoever. Completely useless for the entire product, but very, very, very good for everybody else to have around at performance review time. <laughs> really just targets the curve and makes everybody else look better in comparison. So we use stand-ups, uh, but we figured there are different ways to run meetings. So for instance, we use sit-ups. Uh, they are good for exercise, very good for your health, and also it helps keep the chatter down. Uh, we also use chin-ups. This is a meeting style where everybody sits on the floor and then pulls themselves up so their head is just above the level of the table. Um, really good for the arms, also really good for keeping very short meetings. We used to use close-ups. They were very efficient in one-on-ones, uh, but HR asked us to stop that. And we use give ups where you have a status meeting and you basically go around the table and give status until somebody passes out. We lasted <laughs> three days, three days at our last company offsite. So one of the problems that we've seen in meetings is some people are not busy enough because someone is hogging the time, they're talking the whole meeting. Um, so we have a special technique. We use a speaking baton. When you're done talking, you have to give it to someone else and you can choose who's going to speak. Of course, this, in, this doesn't help with engineers who just won't shut up. Uh, we have a few of those. So we also have tasers. <laughs> with the tasers, you get to decide who's going to stop talking and then you can <laughs> steal the baton. We also use the red hot uh, poker. Uh, you have to hold it and when you, when you stop holding it, you have to shut up. Um, people usually last only a few seconds. So that's very helpful with some people. Of course, we don't, we don't forget our remote workers. So we have this uh, very complex system. We use AR, so we have a virtual baton that you can give to the remote people, and they have to grab it. It's a little awkward for them because you know, they don't really have the baton, so they have to mime it. Uh, so we've been working on a technique where we mail the baton, um, but it takes a few days every time, so the meetings run a little long. There are several other meeting formats which we find particularly effective. 
Uh, we have silent meetings um, where everybody just sits around and emotes at each other. Um, we have different ways of communicating in these meetings. Um, one is just grunting. Uh, we also have tried just closing the eyes or turning the lights off or simply hiding under the table. Um, we go sometimes full emotive uh, where we, this is actually effective in chat rooms. We use emojis for that. Um, and then we have one other one that we've tried, uh, which is just group hug meetings, um, which again, HR asked us to stop. No hard feelings, HR. So minutes, in every meeting, we need someone to take the minutes of the meeting. So at our company, we call that person the scribe. And it goes back to the mindfulness. We like to use uh, parchment and quill. Uh, we like the sound that the quill makes on the parchment itself, parchment itself, scribble. Uh, it really helps. It also helps make the meeting last longer. Uh, we also tried the scribbler, so we started with sketch noting, uh, but it quickly devolved into doodles. And the main, the main benefit of that is when something goes really, really, really wrong, and we go back to the meeting minutes, nobody can decipher the doodles anymore, so we can blame whoever we want. So a lot of people take notes in meetings, but we give them. We give recommendations on how people can do better on efficiency or hygiene. We also like to think about the concept of minutes. I think everybody thinks about taking minutes in meetings. Uh, we're more efficient in our companies. We take seconds. We like to inspire our people. We've talked about this with the engineers before. Um, one of the things that we like to do is to put up little notices around the office to make people think, just make them take a step back and think, how could I be doing things better? Um, and we like to tell them how. Uh, so we'd like to share some of those that we put up around um, the office with you. How many lines of code did you write today? Remember, bugs kill people. <laughs> did you test your code today? <sighs> I wouldn't have done it that way. Let's take a mindfulness break. Do you mind? Can you optimize that? N square, really? <laughs> Spaces, not tabs. How many dependencies did you inject today? How many badges do you have on your gut hit profile? Do you mind? Let's have a little break. Is your code committed? Are you? <laughs> Approve, then merge. Build, then commit. You can't spell comment without me. I can't for the life of me think what I was thinking when I wrote that one. Tabs, not spaces. Of course, even though we litter the office with all those post-its, uh, people tend to not read them. So we also like to send urgent emails uh, that will land in our engineers' inboxes so they have to read them. For instance, please submit CLs with more code in them. That's a good reminder. Quality control metrics lunches today. Free carrots. Update for quality control matrix lunch. Remember to take only two carrots per person. We have this problem every time there's something free in the office, people just swarm it, they love free stuff. So, yeah, we expected the same with the carrots that time. Turns out, uh, there are free carrots in the break room, courtesy of the management team. Please help yourself, no pushing. Reminder, developers should write fewer bugs. And you can see that some of them are the same as on the post-its. We just like to prefix them with reminder to make people feel bad about not having read the post-it. Today is Refactor Friday. <laughs> I don't think people even knew what refactoring was until we introduced this concept. It was huge. Shall we take one more, one more mindfulness break? I think that feels good. Remember your required attendance at optional Sunday work time this weekend. <laughs> this one came from our lawyers, actually. Uh, when people come to work on a Sunday, they work six hours a, a, day, a week, uh, so they're obviously more, more efficient, they produce more code, 
Uh, but we also wanted to keep this legal, so we made this requirement optional. Uh, that way we're good on both fronts. Decomposing carrots have created a pest situation in the break room. <laughs> Staff is advised to please keep food in sealed containers and to avoid the break room at this time. Use more coroutines. It will make your code run faster. We're not sure what coroutines are, but we know that people should use more of them, apparently. This is how we keep the entire engineering team up to speed on modern concepts. Pest control is spraying today due to the infestation in the break room. No need to leave your desks. Please continue working. It's very important in those memos to ne never create panic. Engineers are very prone to that. Please leave your offices immediately. There has been an accident with, with pest control substances. Carrot situation did get a little bit out of hand, but we had the memo system to deal with it, fortunately. Pest control antidotes are available in the lobby. Also, Bob may be visited in intensive care. His doctors are quite optimistic. Condolences may be sent uh, care of Bob family. Please, no carrots. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't like Bob that much. He was kind of a jerk. Yeah, yeah. he kept stealing my carrots. Yeah. So we want to leave you with one final note. Is that if you try hard, there are two things that are inevitable in life. One is death, and the other is success. The inevitability, inevitability, inevitable, inevitability of success. That's what we call this one when we can pronounce it. With that, Finn. we will end. Finn. Finally, uh, we would like to point out that there's some time available for very important questions and answers. We'd be happy to take any questions that you have and say something random in response. Please walk to the mic. Uh, there are mics available on both sides. Um, we'd entertain anything. Are you guys hiring right now? Always. Always hiring, especially if you're cheap. Or just shout out your questions. We'll, uh, we'll make do. What was on Bob's grave? A drawing of a carrot. I'm not sure jerk, I didn't but he go. But did like a little sarcasm. You went to the funeral? No, no, no. I went to his grave. Oh. I drew the carrot. <laughs> there was a question back there. What do we do with old code? What do we do with old code? You know. Honestly, we've never had a company running long enough to deal with that situation. <laughs> I've heard of a thing called source code repository. I don't know, newfangled, not sure it's worth the bother, especially if you're only going to be in business for a couple of months. Yeah, it's never going to stick. Yeah. We're not sure yet. They tend to just appear in the organization. <laughs> We've put several people on the prime. Uh, they've also been reported missing. So if you can help us on that, we'd love to hear your solution. How do we deal with an underperforming employee? How do we deal with an underperforming employee? It's the slug, remember? That's yeah. how we keep the other employees happy. happy. At least we can tell them, look, we know you didn't have a great quarter. You're just meeting expectation. At least you're not like Bob. Somebody has to sit in the lower left, right? <laughs> on the org chart. We talked a lot about companies. What about running? We talked a lot about running companies, and we talked about companies, and I think we get a pass on running. I oh. think it's, I don't, do you have anything to say? We've also been ruining companies. We have it's been almost ruining. almost the same. It is almost the same. Just to add a little curve there, and it's the same word. Uh, any other questions? Thank you. <laughs> uh, yes. Well, we still haven't solved that. We've been thinking about giving everyone a long paddle so they could paddle away from the fire. We just need to uh, change the doors as well. They're too short. Also, what you couldn't see in the diagram, it was necessarily simple, was all the sprinklers are in the upper right, and they just blast this hose of water down, and it runs down the slope. Water just washes everybody out the door. It works perfectly <laughs> in theory. We haven't actually tested it out, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Yes. 
What do our PMs think of Refactor Friday? Did we tell them? <laughs> I don't think so. Do you even talk to the PMs? I don't. I think they're having meetings with themselves. I haven't actually, <laughs> I haven't had That's a That's the only way we found to yet. keep them busy. What does the company sell? What does it matter? <laughs> the point of a company is to make money for the people that started it. Right, so we, our, our business model is pretty simple. You give us money. <laughs> Any VCs in the audience? We'd love to talk to you. Sorry? I'm still missing it. Uh, I'm right here, actually. The slope was on the screen. I, I don't know why this is confusing. Uh, do, you, do we need to go back to that slide? Because it sounds like it's confusing. Yeah, I think we're out of time for that slide. But yeah. we'll, we'll, also, we'll I craft another presentation about this. We should point out, too, it probably wasn't obvious from the quick way that we covered our qualifications, but we're actually consultants. So we stand to the sides telling people where in the middle to go. Right? Yes? Thank you. Any other questions? <laughs> Sorry, pyramid scheme. A cylinder. Would a cylinder be more effective? You mean for the for the seating chart? Um, so we did hear an interesting theory. Actually, Nikola was proposing a theory earlier where you could use a cylinder. Actually, the the merry-go-round was the way he was thinking. However. He's a very 2D kind of guy, and I can see you're a 3D thinker. So if we do a cylinder, then you put the low performers on the outside, and then they spin out of the organization, <laughs> right? And I think we could really achieve some truly phenomenal uh, centripetal velocity in the corporation this way. Uh, we could probably even make an inspirational slide about it. So yeah, thanks for the idea. We'll take that. How long does a what? Well, it's hard to tell because our companies usually last, let's see, so the programming language was last year, testing was six months ago, so about six months for everybody, including us. Six months. Yeah. We have had some six hours. We've had some two hours as well. <laughs> uh, six months is about as long as we go. Yep. yep. What do you do for company retreats? What do we do for company retreats? We just back up and we just keep backing up. <laughs> yeah. Yes. What is our interview process? Uh, we ask questions, and then the people give us answers. It, like, do people not know this? <laughs> I don't know. Do you have a job? <laughs> All right. What animals didn't make it into the org chart? So many animals didn't make it into the org chart. Um, uh, there was. Uh, there was the rabbits. There was the rabbit. Actually, many, many rabbits. Turns out, if you have one, all of a sudden you have a bunch of them. <laughs> There was the snake, but we don't want to talk about that incident. Uh, that, well, it was a dead snake soon after that. Uh, I think that was it. Yeah, just rabbit and snake, actually. Yep. Yes. Were the carrots for the rabbits? That was the problem, is the rabbits all left, and then we're stuck with the carrots. Uh, and, then, and then Bob, or Bob. Yeah. I didn't like him. No. Where do we see the company in five years? I have to say, in a mirror. <laughs> Way behind us. Yes. How did you realize you wanted to be interested in It was the money. <laughs> and it was the fact that we weren't making any at the time. Yes. Let's, uh, let's take one more here, and then we should roll into closing comments. Yes. How did we meet? How did we meet? I said hello. And I think you said... I think I ignored you the first time. <laughs> Very memorable. Yep. We go way back. Thank you. What? One more. I'm sorry. It, it's a zero-based array, so we're going... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who are our mentors? Uh, there was Mentor Graphics. That's the only mentor I can think of. I think that's all, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, we make every, everything up ourselves. We don't need anyone to tell us. I have had several people tell me not to bring up their name in public as being associated with me. Um, so I would name them otherwise. Uh, but that's, that's about it. Thank you.